Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and I'm the master taster of whiskey.com. So today we have one of my favorite bottles here on my cask, on my sherry cask. It's a Lafroic Pedro Jimenez cask, triple matured, 48% ABV, and uh, the maturation procedure is very special. Uh, you might know that there are two specially treated or matured whiskies of Lafroig are on the market. It's the quarter cask, which was firstly matured as all Lafroig 10 years old were, are matured in uh, ex bourbon cask, first fill, second fill, third fill, and whatever. And then they are filled into quarter cask, very small cask, and the uh, value of the inner surface of the cask compared to the volume of the whiskey in this cask is very high. So the maturation in a small cask is much faster than the maturation in a big cask. So first in those American ex bourbon casks, American standard barrels, then in those quarter casks. And this is called then the quarter cask whiskey. Um, there is a special variation of this. The quarter cask whiskies are then refilled in ex sherry casks, and this is called the triple cask. Uh, the triple cask uh, has mm, refill sherry casks for this maturation, and this Lafroig Pedro Jimenez cask uses as the third maturation after the ex bourbon cask, after the quarter cask uses a Pedro Jimenez cask, first fill. So there is not only the European oak, which gives a lot of spiciness and, and complexity to a whiskey, but also the aroma of the Pedro Jimenez sherry, which is very sweet and very fruity and very dark. Um, here on the it's a it's a liter bottle from the travel value and on the back the first maturation of this special expression is an ex bourbon barrels followed by transfer to quarter casks the third maturation is in large european oak pedro jimenez cask which originally contained rare pedro jimenez sherry how rare this sherry is mm, i don't know the result is a complex lafroic with the character of each type of barrel detectable in the final flavors, including a gentle but unmistakable sweetness. Lafroig, meaning beautiful hollow by the broad bay, has married malted barley with smoke from our native peat to produce the most richly flavored of all Scotch whiskies since 1815. Distilled on the tiny island of Isla off the west coast of Scotland, the flavor is as untamed as the ocean itself. This is a manufactured cork. It's no whole piece. It's made out of parts. And uh, the possibility that this cork smells like cork, this corking bottles is very, very low. I never had a bottle uh, which corked with such a uh, cork made out of tiny bits. <clears throat> so that's no bad thing to use such a cork. Oh. <laughs> I already smell the smoke of the peat fire. Oh. Very aromatic smoke phenols and people often make differences between smoky and peaty. That's not right. If you cut peat and have a immediately smell on the peat, there's nothing. Perhaps a little bit sour, but nothing else. It, a, a fresh peat does not smell at all. Even when it's dry, it smells nothing. So when you light it, when you ignite it, when it's burning, then it starts to have this peat fire aroma, and so I call it smoky. And uh, 
I distinguish between smoke and medicinal smoke. When you do not heat the fire up so much that you have these uh, big smoke, wet smoke, then you uh, have uh, less oxidization in the fire and you have more phenols coming out from the fire. And this is this medicinal smoke. Oh, wonderful. In the back there's some sweetness from the sherry. There's a little bit of licorice coming up. And this medicinal smoke converts over to a to a bonfire. No medicinal smoke. The fruitiness of the sherry, I'm not quite sure if it's there. The, the smokiness is so intense. Perhaps. It takes quite a time until the your nose gets accustomed to the smoke and you're able to detect other aromas behind the smoke. There is sherry, there is sweetness, yes. Big, full aroma, mouth-watering, sherry, peat, oakiness, perhaps some grapes, and the oak becoming stronger and stronger, taking over, the fruitiness is fading away, dryness appearing. The fruitiness and the sweetness is gone away. The oakiness resides. It's a very interesting roller coaster ride from the aroma. Ah, the smoke is less and less, and the fruitiness and the sweetness coming through, and the licorice coming up. Then the full aroma on the tongue, and then fading away, and the long, long aftertaste, and the, the oak moving in. Oh, a wonderful full aroma, and. Mm. If you ask me how old this whiskey is, I can't tell you. Uh, this is a mixture of different casks, different maturation periods after each other. If you have fresh quarter casks, the maturation period will be very short in those quarter casks. If you have used ones, it will become longer. Uh, perhaps you have third fill ex bourbon casks, they might be eight, nine, ten years old. If you have first filled bourbon cask in the mixture, then they are three or four years old. So there's a mixture and you can't say which one is the youngest. Only the master blender will know and this will be different from batch to batch. So they're not writing the age on the bottle. You can't tell how old this whiskey is. The maturation process this is the very special thing for this bottle. This is what you buy with this bottle. It isn't cheap, no. It's a big bottle, it's 48% ABV, 96 US proof. Quite expensive, you're only able to get your fingers on it in a travel value store. So it's quite rare on the market and so it's quite expensive. Thank you for watching whiskey.com. Stay tuned, there's more to come. Feel free to discuss this video with us on our newly opened forum and please share this video with your friends.